Um, I will move that House File 28 of the special session be recommended to be re-referred to the Ways and Means Committee. Members, this is the Environment and Natural Resources Supplemental LCCMR and Policy Bill. This is the same bill that passed off the House floor, House File 4554, during the last day of the regular 2020 session, with the, session, with the exception of some changes that the MPCA worked on with the National Waste and Recycling Association. Ms. Gothier and Mr. Kadelka are available from the PCA to answer questions. And maybe to give just a little bit of time, um, I wanna make sure that Representative Fabian is given the opportunity as the lead. Um, uh, if you, uh, Mr. Strohmeyer, if you could uh, let Ms. Gothier in to just explain the change that was made uh, between uh, the end of regular session and this special session. Or Ms. Taylor, if she would like to do it. Mr. Chair, um... Ms. Gothier and Mr. Cadelgar are in the room already. Mr. Strohmeyer, could you repeat? Mr. Chair, Ms. Gothier and Mr. Cadelgar are in the room already. Okay. So, um, Ms. Gothier or Mr. Cadelka, if either of you'd like to explain the difference. Mr. Chairman, this is Greta Gothier from the MPCA. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to this language. I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Kurt Kadelka, because he negotiated these um, compromised language uh, and worked on this project. And I believe he is in the Zoom room as well. Commissioner Kadelka. Mr. Chair and committee members, thank you for the record. My name is Kurt Kadelka. I'm assistant commissioner with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. There were a couple changes. The one that the chair mentioned was with the National Waste and Recycling Association that re regarded the environmental covenants language. We tightened up the language to make it very clear that the ability for the agency to acquire property is only limited to if it enters into an environmental covenant with another party and any easements that may be needed for the covenant. It also has language there that explicitly states that for environmental covenant to be entered into, all um, parties in the agreement have to sign on to it. So the agency could not force an environmental covenant onto another party. And so with these changes, working with NWRA, uh, they were able to remove their opposition to it. We've also run the language by AMC and the Solid Waste Administrators, and they are also do not have a problem with the, the compromise language. The other quick change that was made that deals with the priority qualified facility in the closed landfill program, there were two very small changes made after talking to the state bar um, administration and also the Minnesota Land Trust Association. And what they do is clear up some of the issues dealing with uh, limitations, uh, excuse me, on how liens will be placed on properties when that legislation is is put into place to make sure that it's clear and understandable to future owners so that they know what regulations apply to them and what do not. And also removing the uh, language in there that would not have the 30 and 40 year cap on lien supply. And so that was removed also as a result of those conversations. Members, are there any questions for Mr. Kadelka? Thank you, Mr. Kadelka. Members, are there any questions? Uh, Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to um, ask, is there any options here? I think Dan is just getting on. Um, if we could make sure that he has an opportunity to uh, address the committee, that would be great if you would like to do so. Thank you, Representative Heinzman, and he just texted me. So, Representative Fabian, and maybe uh, I think we had a couple of other members. Clay, could you just go through uh, the role again so that we're formal? Yep, I'm. Uh, I'm seeing some new names in the uh, participant room. Uh, Representative Fabian. Uh, 
Uh, Fabian is present. Fabian is present. Uh, Representative Green. Star six, Steve. Uh, I can come back to Representative Green. Uh, Representative Purcell. Present. Purcell. Yep, Purcell is present. Uh, then uh, Representative Green. Mr. Chair. Mr. Strohmeyer. Uh, Ms. Uh, I got a text from Ms. Zipko that um, Representative Green will, may not be attending. So just want to okay. let you know that. Good to know. And then um, Mr. Chair, I believe uh, Representative Morrison, you are present, correct? I am present. Okay. That was the only ones we were missing, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Representative Fabian, so we had just uh, moved uh, House File, Special Session House File 28, and the Pollution Control Agency had given uh, testimony on the change that had occurred from the bill that had passed at the end of the regular session. Uh, do you have any questions, uh, Representative Fabian? No, I don't think so. The bill is largely the same as what we did before, correct? as I'm going through it here. Nothing has changed except for what MPCA has done. That is correct. Yep. And then have you done the A1 amendment? I have not done the A1 amendment. Uh, we were still on the explanation and um, my intent would be to get these uh, two bills that we're considering today to the Ways and Means Committee to make options. Uh, as negotiations would continue uh, in the days ahead. Are there any other questions to the bill? Members, I would uh, move A1 amendment. This amendment provides 6 million in supplemental funding to the Minnesota Zoo. Uh, during the regular session, there was a Supplemental supplemental budget proposal from the Walls Flanagan administration to provide support for the zoo. Uh, this amendment uh, is a formal effort to do that. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Uh, Mr. Chair, Dan Fabian here. Representative Fabian. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And as I read the amendment, uh, the $6 million comes from the general fund. Is that correct? That is correct. And this is a proposal brought forth by the administration, correct? Dr. Fabian, that is correct. And then my final question, are there any offsets anyplace else that they brought forward, um, you know, to cover the $6 million? Oops, what happened? Not Representative Fabian, no. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, I like the zoo and the work that they're doing out there, but um, I'd like to see some explanations about some offsets. You and I have talked about this on the phone a couple of different times. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be in the legislature next year, but it would just seem to me that it would be prudent on the part of this current legislature to start making some adjustments uh, to the budget to try to make it a little bit easier for people to tackle, which is, I believe is going to be a really big problem next year, but that can is getting kicked down the road. And um, I'm concerned about uh, the scale of the reductions that may have to be brought forward for you folks next year. So I'll just kind of leave it at that as an editorial unless somebody else wants to chime in. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Representative Fabian. And I just want you to know, and members of the committee, I've had uh, conversations with uh, the staff, with uh, Congresswoman Angie Craig, to see if there was any attempt at federal dollars that could assist with this. It seems that uh, there, there are some strong limits on any of the federal money, uh, both current and potentially future, but there are still efforts trying. So there's I'm trying to find some ways to make sure that uh, the Minnesota Zoo, which is a state agency, is supported. Um, obviously, when you're reliant on attendance uh, and membership, and those don't occur, just like with many businesses, uh, we have a we have a challenge. And so, um, I think Minnesotans value the zoo, and it's a state agency where we want to try to provide for that support. Uh, Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, do we have any idea what uh, the hard numbers are at the zoo? Is there anyone that can? walk us through the financials to some extent, at least have an idea, is this scalable? Um, what happens if they don't get exactly $6 million? What are the ramifications of this? And I, I'm not seeing any of that here. It might be um, in an email that I missed, but is the, any of that kind of information available? And if, if it is scalable, what is the bottom line? Representative Heinzman, and I'm, I don't believe we have anybody from the Zoom, Mr. Strohmeyer, uh, on the Zoom room, but the, uh, the Minnesota Zoo has provided a plan where they're trying to do uh, distance uh, attendance, where people can drive through the zoo, trying to make sure that it's safe and sound. It's my understanding that $6 million is the minimal request to keep things operating. They've already laid off uh, a number of employees. This is not uh, to go back to status quo request. This is a minimum request uh, to continue through the fiscal year to make uh, sure that the zoo continues to operate. The animals have a cost uh, and that takes time. The energy, the, the operations are all there. Um, I don't know if Mr. Hagermeyer has received anything recently on that, but we, we do have a memo believe, from the zoo that we can send out uh, that came near the end of session, which I might have been on one of the earlier documents. Either Mr. Strohmeyer or Mr. Hagemeyer. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I haven't seen anything recently from them. I believe I saw something come out maybe the begin, uh, end of March, beginning of April, where the projected deficit through the end of fiscal 20 was about 6.2 or $3 million. So that was a lost revenue for the current fiscal year, not including fiscal year 21, but I haven't seen anything since then. Mr. Chair. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's, I think we all understand and appreciate, I should say understand the value and appreciate the Minnesota Zoo. I think what we're struggling with is not having the opportunity to really better understand the financial situation. I, I appreciate your suggesting that this is the bare minimum, but uh, respectfully, it's just difficult to be voting on this without even hearing from the zoo or having hard numbers for us to look at as, as we would in a typical situation. It's very uncomfortable spending that kind of money when right now we're looking down the road and as Representative Fabian was pointing out, um, we're likely getting, going to be cutting state agencies significantly in the coming biennium considering the projected shortfalls. So um, it's it's just a, a very, very awkward situation to be put in as a member of this committee. So Heisman, I believe Ms. McGrath is uh, in the room. So if uh, she would be able to uh, testify and provide some details, that would be helpful. Ms. McGrath from the Minnesota Zoo. Ms. McGrath. I'm Can you hear me now? Yes, proceed. Okay. Okay. Hi, my name is Missy McGrath, Legislative Director at the Minnesota Zoo. Um, I thank you for the opportunity today. We were testifying another committee, so I'm sorry it was a little clumsy for me to get over to you all today. Um, and was there a specific question, or are we just talking about the um, 
the, the request for the appropriation. Representative Heinzman, would you want to repeat your question for Ms. McGrath? I, I will do that, Mr. Chair, and also try to condense it to the best of my ability. Um, Ms. McGrath, what, what I'm struggling with, and I know there's other members that are struggling also, is uh, trying to establish if this number is scalable, um, if this is absolutely the uh, best or worst case scenario. It's hard to see that without any financials in front of us, without any uh, information there for us to, to look at and walk through directly. Um, and, then, and then additionally, um, we know that we're going to be cutting, at least that's the predictions according to MMB, um, because of uh, shortfalls in, in our Minnesota budget, um, we're going to be cutting other agencies. So this is just a real difficult thing to have to vote on right now. Um, and this is coming directly from general fund, which we know is, is just to, to put it very nicely, uh, in a real tough shape going forward. So if you could explain, I guess, number one, is, is this absolutely the, the amount that has to be uh, uh, supported in order for the zoo to stay solvent or if that's scalable? And then what is the plan beyond um, 2020? Yes, thank you, Representative, um, Mr. Chair. Um, so we did substantial modeling with MMB and um, went into numbers that talked about salaries and animal care. And um, we believe that with the revenue loss as we uh, temporarily close the zoo on March 14th, um, going into our peak season, as you can imagine, um, we were facing a revenue shortfall of about $6.33 million in the current fiscal year. And then when you take into consideration the social distancing and the reduced um, revenue based on attendance, that is the reality of the COVID pandemic, um, our revenue projections for total um, are about 19 million. So we believe that this is um, probably the least amount the zoo can receive and still remain um, a, a Minnesota treasure for Minnesotans. Um, I will tell you that we did what we could do on our own. We froze all expenditures. We canceled all contracts. Um, we laid off 58 staff and we also reduced hours um, for about 125. So 125 positions were impacted. So we are trying not to put um, the, the total amount back on the state, but the six million is really what we need to re be able to reopen and serve Minnesota. Representative Heinzman, that answer your question? The second half was, uh, are we, do we have projections or any idea what we might be looking at. I know that's um, quite a ways away, but are we going to be right back in the same spot January 1st? Um, and I, I, yes, thank you. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, our CFO is actually on testifying on the other committee, so I wish she was here. Um, I would feel more comfortable if she was able to provide the committee with some projections because she's done substantial work on that. Um, and, and what I will tell you is that we've rolled up our sleeves. Um, we're working with different ways to regenerate revenue and to work with our foundation on, on kind of a save the zoo campaign. So while I can't make any promises about the future holds, um, we want to be a partner with the state of Minnesota and prevent us from a, another major revenue shortfall. But in terms of specific numbers, um, with your permission, I would like to um, offer to provide that to the committee um, after we get those numbers from her. Representative Heinzman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Here again, I, I, and I'm not trying to belabor this, Mr. Chair. It's just, as I've stated, and I won't restate, this is difficult making this kind of a choice without those numbers right in front of us. And I'm not sure that we should be making any kind of a decision without that information. Representative Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just wanted to make clear for the record as uh, as we're debating this that um, you know, the Minnesota Zoo is a, is a state agency. So, you know, I just want to, I can't emphasize this enough. They don't have a lot of options that other types of businesses or organizations might have um, to make up this, this shortfall that obviously is due to the pandemic. It has nothing to do with a fault on the, the part of the zoo. And 
Um, also wanted to speak to the fact that it, you know, when we think of a zoo, we think of visiting the zoo and seeing the animals in their environments, but the, the zoo also does some really important research um, that, you know, years in the making that potentially would be disrupted. And it's hard to imagine um, that we'd, we would ever be able to rebuild uh, what we have right now um, if, if we lose, lose the zoo. So I just wanted to emphasize those things because I think um, supporting the zoo during this time and making sure that those of those long-term um, consequences are avoided uh, would be in, in our best interests uh, given the situation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Lewick. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I've got two questions. I guess, uh, first of all, uh, uh, <clears throat> when does a zoo feel uh, that they really need to be open in order to gain some reasonable revenue? Do you have a timeline uh, that marks out for the governor so he understands uh, exactly what uh, the current restrictions you're abiding by are costing? Uh, and how far does it go? Are you talking about next fall, next winter? Ms. McGrath. Yes, thank you, Representative and, and um, Mr. Chair. We are actually really excited to announce uh, more publicly, you'll be hearing soon, that the Minnesota Zoo will be opening a drive through experience um, as early as next week. And we are working to open a physically distant zoo in late July, early August, um, and then to keep building there in, in phases based on what the, the pandemic situation allows us to do um, in conjunction with, um, obviously, MMB and the governor's office, um, we are really looking forward to opening the zoo and getting back into a position where we can generate revenue um, and serve Minnesotans. So, yes, we we have a model that we're looking at reopening the zoo very soon. Representative Lewis. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, that That's uh, uh, the, the right answer, and I guess... Uh, We've already had uh, uh, much smaller venues uh, out in rural Minnesota that uh, uh, provide a similar uh, opportunity for folks to see animals. And, uh, and they literally beat down the door of the Department of Commerce to get permission to do some pretty basic things. Uh, and they are, in fact, uh, just opening up now. Uh, so that's, uh, that's good news. Uh, so you're still saying that uh, in the very near future, if you start to be able to open the gates up, uh, we're still going to need six million dollars to break even, uh, or? Uh, uh, McGrath. Yes, Representative um, and Committee Chair, thank you. Uh, yes, unfortunately, the revenue shortfall that we realized when we temporarily closed on March 14th through the end of the fiscal year um, is. Is substantial. We only have a $29 million operating budget. We're unable to um, produce revenue right now. And we do two thirds of our own revenue. Only one third of our operating support comes from the state of Minnesota. So without our doors being open, it has been a major revenue shortfall on our budget. And as I said, we anticipate um, even further shortfall next year. But we think with our $10 million appropriation, assuming, you know, we, that stays whole. Um, and the revenue that we're able to produce and the, the fundraising efforts that our foundation will embark upon as in a kind of a save the zoo campaign. Um, we're very optimistic that we will be able to continue to keep our doors open and serve Minnesota. Uh, yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Although I, I, uh, I share uh, that same concern uh, that uh, uh, to me, the, most important thing that we can do at the zoo is to get that place open uh, in a reasonable manner uh, because uh, I'm afraid come next budget uh, cycle, we're gonna be looking at that portion that the zoo gets uh, under normal situation uh, as to whether or not that can be supported and be a trade off between a whole bunch of other uh, issues. So uh, I share uh, some real uh, <laughs> discomfort uh, 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 at this point. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. That uh, that does uh, shed a little more light onto things. Representative Fisher. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. And this is a question for Ms. McGrath. I want to say thank you for the presentation you made. Uh, one of the questions that are the question I have is uh, when you're mentioning for next year is that uh, that you'll still be under some pressure next year. Uh, trying to get an idea how much that might be. I've talked to some businesses who have opened up fully uh, and what they're finding is that their revenue is like half of what they had before and they're figuring it'll be six to eight months before they're back to normal people coming in, even though they're open up fully because of people who are concerned about the virus. How long do you think it will be for the zoo before you might be seeing people feeling confident to come back and be up at what used to be a normal level? In the ground. Representative, Mr. Chair, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. Um, mm -hmm. We have the benefit of the uh, AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, who um, is comp it, it's comprised of 223 um, zoological gardens, zoos, aquariums, and they're accredited, and they do a lot of um, research together, and they post a lot of white papers together. And so we have the benefit of kind of watching the model throughout our industry, some zoos that are already open, some zoos that are partially open, and we're really basing our projections on a 50% model. Um, but yeah. at the same time, you know, really looking to be entrepreneurial and add add things to our zoo that can increase our revenue outside of the traditional zoo experience. So like what does our jack-o'-lantern spectacular um, event look like in a socially distanced world where we can still do something and have that revenue? Maybe there's a holiday opportunity um, where we can charge additional revenue for people to visit the zoo in a socially distanced way in, you know, that celebrates the holidays, something we haven't done before. So, you know, I think the reality that you're, that you're speaking of is true. I think it's a real thing. Um, but I think we've done substantial and that's one of the reasons we needed to reduce our, our salary expenses, right? Our salary expenses mm -hmm. are a huge part of the operating. And so we recognize that and we took that action. Um, and so I, I think, you know, I want to be realistic, but I think we're in a good position with our modeling to move forward and, you know, be able to keep going once we get past kind of this, this emergency time, this crisis time for us. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would note there is precedent for providing support for the zoo uh, several years ago uh, with low attendance. We did provide some emergency funding. So uh, when we look at the past as an example or a precedent, uh, we do have that. So I would uh, renew uh, my uh, amendment A1 and uh, ask for the roll call, Clay. Hanson. Aye. Claflin. That was I. Claflin, I. Claflin, I. Uh, Fabian. Fabian. Uh, Backer. Okay. Oh. Fabian. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got kicked out of the meeting for a minute. Um, so, Ms. McGrath, while we were talking, I just did a little Google search and so forth. I'm curious to know, the, you mentioned the AZA. Um, how many zoos around the country are open and going full speed? Because I looked in, even in California, in 51 out of the 58 counties, uh, the state has opened up and zoos are mentioned specifically in the article that's in the Sacramento Bee. Um, how, what, what's the status of our closure in Minnesota versus the other states that, uh, you, the AZA is, a, uh, in. So, yes. Uh, thank you. Representative committee chair. Both, uh, both of for a moment. So we were in the, in the middle of a vote, uh, Representative Fabian, oh. the, the, I'm going to, we were voting. I'm sorry. Um, so, but I, I do take you at your word that you were unable to be in that last minute. So I am going to give you a little leeway to ask the question, but this would be the final. No, that's fine. Yeah. So I, I'm okay, Mr. Chair. That's fine. Um, I, I'm voting no on the amendment. Okay. Okay. So we'll continue with. I the love question. this. But, yep. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yep. Right, proceed. Fabian votes nay. Uh, Backer. Backer, no. Backer, no. Becker Finn. Becker Finn. Eklund. 
Yes. Fisher. Yes. Green. No. Heinzman. No. Lee. Lee I. Lee I. Lewick. Lewick, no. Lewick, no. Morrison. Yes. Nelson. No. Purcell. Purcell. Purcell, I. Purcell, I. Sandell. Sandell, I. Sandell, I. Sandeen. I. Sandeen, I. Tice. Tice, no. Tice, no. Wagenius. Aye. Aye. And I believe Rep. Becker Finn had to go to another committee. Um, she is presenting in another committee, so she'd be excused from that. Okay. Uh, 10 ayes, 7 nays. The A1 amendment is adopted. We would proceed uh, to the bill as amended. Is there any discussion to the bill as amended? I will renew my motion that House File 28 as amended be recommended to be re-referred to the Ways and Means Committee. Oh, Representative Lewick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to, again, register my concern about uh, the survey day uh, requirements on tagging. Uh, uh, that uh, what we're going to put in statute here is one unworkable and uh, relative to GPS uh, tagging of these animals. And it just doesn't make sense to put stuff in the statute that uh, uh, is uh, simply not, uh, uh, not able to do with today's technology, at least not without extreme, extreme cost. Uh, I just want to put that on the record and uh, particularly uh, uh, the other element that, and that is to sort of uh, set up a potential vigilante situation uh, uh, with deer that would uh, escape. We certainly don't want deer to escape. We got to immediately get them back under control, but I'm, I'm a little, un very uncomfortable that uh, uh, some of these provisions is going to end up getting us in trouble down the road with that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Lewick. And I should note uh, for members and the public uh, on the committee webpage, there are uh, written testimony uh, from a variety of sort of, of interests uh, on this topic, as well as other topics, as well as the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency uh, providing some details on uh, bills as well. I would. Are there any other questions? I want to make sure we're giving people the opportunity. I would uh, renew my motion that House File 28 as amended be recommended to the Ways and Means Committee. <clears throat> Clay, would you take the call? Take the roll. Hanson. Aye. Claflin. Aye. Fabian. No. Becker. No. Becker, uh, Rep. Becker Finn still in the other committee. Uh, Eklund. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Becker Finn, aye. Fisher, aye. Green. No. Heinzman. Heinzman, no. Heinzman, no. Lee. Lee, I. Lee, I. Lewick. Lewick, no. Morrison. Aye. Nelson. No. Purcell.
Purcell. Aye. Purcell, aye. Sandell. Aye. Sundin. Aye. Sundin, aye. Sundin, aye. Tice. Tice. Looks like she has her hand raised and keeps getting muted. Tice, no. Tice, no. Eugenius. Wagenius. Did we lose Representative Wagenius? I do not see her on the call anymore. Okay. Well, the current total is 10 ayes and seven nays. The motion prevails and the bill is adopted. Sent to Ways and Means Committee.